my friends, and welcome to episode 24 of the Kiss Army Nation podcast. We are your hosts, Pasquale Veri. And I'm Claudio Espera. Welcome to the show, everyone. So I remember meeting our next guest at a Kiss concert back in 2009. We corresponded a lot on Facebook before the meeting, and then after the meeting became really good friends. During that time, I took the pleasure in following his Kiss adventures, beginning with the Montreal 2009 concert, to the Kiss Cruise, to his meeting and becoming friends with Eric Singer, and to his development of, of the Friends of Eric Singer fan page. Kiss Army, our fan profile is on Kevin Ganley. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hello. Thank hey, you for Kevin. having me. Hello. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, buddy. Welcome. Welcome we're gonna to put show. we're gonna put the uh, we're gonna put the applause in post production. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, Kevin, let's see the shirt you're wearing. Oh yes. Uh, well, since you told me there's a there's a video, so a live seventy five representing man. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I was uh, I was shocked to hear that Anthony's leaving the band and looking for a replacement for a live seventy five. I know, as was I. A fantastic, know? fantastic band, fantastic production, indeed. Um, Hey, to fill up those shoes, man! Can't wait to see that. Mm -hmm. I think Joe, uh, the the drummer, is still the only one left, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you know, best of luck to Anthony, and I hope the band Absolutely. continues to flourish. Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, hopefully they, we get to see them back in uh, in Canada soon. You know, oh, be post lovely, man. Uh, post be so uh, nice. COVID world. Yeah, they're playing yeah. a couple of dates: uh, one in September, one in October, I believe, and one in December. I think so, the closest we can get to is Poughkeepsie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I might try to catch the uh, December show. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see how it goes, right? With uh, with all the the with what's going on in the world. One day uh, everything's going uh, uh, going great, and the next, you know, you never know, right? Exactly. So I'm hoping for you. That's all I'm saying. We'll see. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Kev. Uh, you know, Pasquale mentioned in the opener that uh, you guys met at the 2009 Montreal Kiss show. So I think uh, I, I think you're gonna agree with me. So the great thing about being a Kiss fan is the opportunity to meet fans from basically around the world, no matter where you come from. So can you tell us uh, about some of the fans that you met through your uh, Kiss experiences? Uh, well, yeah. Well, first it's it was again Pasquale in 2009. That was actually my first Kiss concert. Um, oh, was it? Okay. Yes, it was. So that was my first kiss experience. Um, and then it went all downhill from there. So <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you soon. <laughs> um, so um, I think, I think uh, the, it was mostly the kiss cruise was what uh, was what brought um, basically broadened my horizons on like the, the spectrum of kiss fans. You get, you got, you got guys like, where I'm from a small town, everyone's like, Oh, you're the crazy kiss fan. And then I, and I see some people on, on the kiss cruises and I'm looking at your background and, uh, and your room place. And I'm like, Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tame compared to these people, you know? And, uh, but it, you know, it's, it, it's great. You know, the, the, the kiss cruise is one of those places where you get to meet everyone from around the world. You get to learn everyone's cultures and, you know, their experiences and yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I, like it's a back a lack of better term. I guess I can say it. It's, you know, I'm going to sound like uh, I'm just going on and on and on, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kiss cruise is what, what really opened my eyes to, you know, the, the, the spectrum of kiss fans out there. So again, it's, you know, kiss that afforded you the opportunity to meet fans. You wouldn't have otherwise met as you've, uh, as you stated, yeah. but um, you know, Every story has a beginning. Yep. So where did it start for you? How did you get into KISS? So you guys are probably going to make fun of me or laugh at me, but so KISS for me started with wrestling. So I watched uh, the WCW World Championship Wrestling, for those who don't know, the August 23rd, 1999 uh, episode of Monday Night Nitro, where Kiss was playing at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, and they were introducing the Kiss Demon character mm -hmm. for the first time, who would be played eventually be played by um, Dale Torborg. For those who've uh, done the, uh, you know, the meet and greet circuit, have obviously met him. 
Uh, he's done wrestling and he's also in uh, baseball now. But uh, yeah, that's basically what uh, what's what started my fandom. You know, I was six years old. I was looking at them going, what in the hell am I watching? This stuff is cool. And then just went from there, man. You know, I, I was already a big fan of wrestling with my, my, my dad. And just with that, just just skyrocketed from there. Wow. So you had never heard from uh, from Kiss before, uh, before no. that? Uh, no, wow. no, no, because I was never raised on really rock and roll in the house. I was raised on oldies, uh, country and disco. OK, got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I could with I was made for loving you. but That's about it. So you mentioned that the 2009 was your first show. Correct. How many shows have you seen and which one is the most memorable for you? So I've seen, so if I'm counting the Kiss Cruises and if I'm counting the Sail Away and the indoor shows as two concerts each, I've seen them 17 times. Okay. Okay, cool. So there's two shows that stand out. So the first show that stood out for me was Portland, Maine. Pasquale, you, you, you and I went to that concert in, uh, yeah. in September. Actually, it was five years ago next weekend actually yeah, on the, the time we record this uh labor day weekend and uh yeah it, it was uh the, that was the first time i actually had a meet and greet with the band um and then well meet and greet outside of the cruise i mean and yeah. in a different uh in, in, where i got to see the uh you know the acoustic the small intimate acoustic set and i got to have the picture with the band And the other show that really stood out for me was actually my last KISS concert, which was August 16th, 2019 in Montreal, where I got to see them front row. Oh, you were front row. Oh, my yes. gosh. I was wow. front row for that concert. I was front row dead center. Wow. And I was Gene Simmons' pick puppet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was just throwing picks at me. At the minute, like, you know, when Paul's doing his rap and everything, it dies down and, you know, you're dancing and it's hot, you're sweating and you're like, holy crap, I got to catch my breath. And I put my head down for a minute. All I could feel in the back of my head is just Jesus going, just throwing picks. And I just felt one like hit me in the back of the head. <laughs> What the hell? And you just see Gene, you know, being total Gene. <laughs> hey, did, did you do the uh, meet and greet that day? Also? Uh, yes, I did. That was my last meet and greet that I did. Wow. I, you know, I went out and I, I said, you know what? If this is going to be my last kiss, I might as well just go all out. Of course. Of course. Of you know, course. Kevin, we were had we had um, a discussion with John Downs a few episodes ago, and we were talking about you know the experiences that Kiss fans have, and it's mm -hmm. not about you know flouting flaunting your experiences, but sharing mm -hmm. your experiences. Absolutely. And I'm sorry, but I remember the Portland show, man. You had an all access pass, and I mm -hmm. remember how jealous I was, <laughs> but I also remember how happy you were and excited yep. you were. You were like a 12 year old kid. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Oh, it was, uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to share too much detail about it. because I, you know, it's again, I don't want to be flaunting it, but yeah, it was, um, it was knowing the right people and being at the right place at the right time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I actually didn't even know I had that until I opened an envelope and I saw that sitting in the envelope. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. And I was What like, an experience, uh, okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's, uh, let's go with that. And, um, Yeah, it was. I think that was probably my favorite show of all time. Just the entire experience, the whole afternoon, uh, the entire weekend was just. I don't think that that weekend could ever be topped, mm -hmm. personally. Personally, hey, I, Kev, I, I, I know I have a question, and this is kind sure. of basically out of out of script, but uh, you know, considering the fact that you got into Kiss, you know, a little bit late in the game. Yeah. Did you go back in time and revisit, you know, the, the original lineup? You Absolutely. Know, all, and I all studied. I, I'm one of those people that if I ever want to get to know a band, I will study it. Okay. And study it. So you go deep. Study it. You go deep. Okay. Oh, yeah. So there would be days I'd just be sitting there and, you know, okay, this is not the best place to go, but it's the first place to go with Wikipedia. So you're studying it and then you go on other things and then you end up, you know, watching things and then you're like, oh, okay, okay, that's it. And uh, to circle back, um, I know I'm flip-flopping a little bit, but, you know, between 1999 and I think 
2009 when we had the first my first Kiss show. I think what really put it back on the map for me for Kiss, because obviously when you're six years old, you don't remember a lot, was Family Guy when they did the when they had uh, Kiss right. stock. I think it was in 2000. I want to say five when they returned on the air and they had the Kiss stock uh, Kiss special. And then mm-hmm. that's when I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, Kiss. And then Gene Simmons Family Jewels and you know, okay. so on and so forth. So, you know, you're in your early teens by then and you're starting to really pay attention. And then that's when it really kicked into overdrive. Okay. Okay. Hey, Kev, uh, we, yep. I know that uh, we, you touched on the, on, the, on the Kiss Cruise stuff, so we yep. will talk about, about it later. Sure. But besides that, can you tell us uh, about some of your other Kiss experiences? For example, Kiss Expos, have you been to any? I've been to one in Jersey. Oh, uh, Nice. Yeah, I've been to one in Jersey. Well, Pasquale, you were at that one as well. Yeah. It's it seems like even if we live so close, we end up finding each other in the weirdest <laughs> possible ways. The beauty of being a KISS fan. Right? Um, yeah, so I, I did New Jersey. Uh, you know, I actually said to myself, I want to do a KISS Expo before the band hangs it up. And at that time, I don't think I could have gotten a better lineup at the time. You know, I, you know, Eric Singer was there. Bruce Kulick was there. I think Lydia Chris was there too, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that, that expo, it's, it's a hell of a, you know, it was the, awesome. Jersey, it was the 2016 awesome. uh, Jersey Kiss Expo. And I think awesome. um, for those who are uh, a little more, uh, if, how can I say it? A little more, uh, if you want to deep dive a little further, you got, I think there was Robert Fleischman, the original lead singer of the Vinny Vincent. Invasion. Vinny Vincent. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, and who was also in Journey for about a, a cup of coffee um, between Greg Rowley and Steve Perry coming in. But, you know, that's my musical knowledge, guys. <laughs> the studying stuff. We can tell. We can tell. <laughs> he was there for a cup of coffee. And I want to say, yeah, that was uh, pretty star-studded. I, 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 I feel like I'm missing somebody, but I can't remember. But, Have you uh, been to any of the uh, of the Pasquale's, uh, you know, get-togethers that uh, we had we had here in Montreal? And, what uh, he has some? I was never <laughs> invited. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I I've done a few. Well, that's where a live '75 the shirt came from. Oh, there we you had, go. Uh, when was it? Uh, gosh, four years now. When we had the double header. Um, did you go to the, you came to the first and second New Year's shows, right? So it's 2016, 2017. Yeah, we did, well, we did the one where you had the double header. Yeah, yeah. That was, I think, the last one I went to. Right, but you also went to the first one I did, the 2016 show. Yes, shows. yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, I remember, really yeah, because I remember you were helping me out, and yeah, apparently so- you told me after the show I was very difficult to work with. I remember... <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's that's the one the, that we had um jr small in right yes yes yes, 16, yes, huh? yes yes now yeah. i remember yes yeah i so was there with, that my, with my daughter i remember yeah, yeah yeah so that was yes jr that's right we had jr and then we had uh lydia yeah at one of them yeah. we had mitch uh do uh do a uh, q a mitch mark Tony. montague yeah, oh yeah, mark montague, yeah <laughs> we had right. mark montague twice though didn't we or just yeah one? yeah I we had, had JR, JR on the second show. Right. So we had Mark Montague both years. I remember that. Yes. And that's right. Because it was in 2016, because when I went to the Jersey Kiss Expo, he was there. That's right. And uh, Danny, his friend, looked at me and he's like, I know you from somewhere. And I said, yes, Montreal. And he's like, yes, that's right. Because we had the uh, the dinner the night before. Yeah. And that's... So- uh, Kev, Kev, now that now that you, that you mentioned, you know, uh, Kiss Alive '75, I yep. guess you have seen uh, Kiss uh, tribute bands. So for you, which ones stand out and uh, uh, and why? So it's which hard one to is- say. It's hard to say, right? Like I can't really pick one because every different band brings a different show. It right. brings a different atmosphere. I can never say, "Well, I like this one over that one," because every show is different because they're different people they're different production different budget you know i've seen the kissed um i've seen a live 75 uh i believe i saw another one i don't remember their name i want to say destroyer but i can't remember but if you if you've been to uh if you've been to pasquale's you know uh 
uh, Bosch party. So we had a kiss there. Right? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, yes, I, I remember that uh, very well. Those guys are um, awesome. But like I said, uh, I can't really, I can't really pinpoint, you know, my favorite because again, different bands, different production. So it's, re it's really hard. You know, it, it's, it's just cool to see, like, okay, so this band, how they bring it, they, what they bring to the table, what, what, um how they pay tribute to the band okay uh like a live 75 for example they they hold yeah. true to the 1975 era of the alive and uh you know kissed it was like basically a variety of you know 70s to now yeah. um so that's what i like it's every different band brings a different um perspective yeah different of twist. what they're yeah. paying tribute to so Absolutely. i can never say i like this over this because it's it's cool. It's different. So, Kevin, you mentioned our Kiss collection. What about yours? Do you collect? <laughs> very few. Very few. You know, I I don't have enough space to uh, to to you know I don't have space enough space to be like yeah I got a whole room dedicated. I mean, I had some stuff on the wall. I had some uh, memorabilia that's sentimental to me. That's about. Uh, it's more sentimental stuff, like uh, little things like uh, I have here a um, uh, I have an LP from uh, Carnival of Souls that I I went out of my way to go get signed. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the um, that was one of the main reasons also that I went to uh, the Jersey Kiss Expo was because Bruce Kulick was there and he, he was the missing autograph. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a couple of the Kiss Cruise uh, posters. Um, that I got, and I got one of those um, the meet and greet kiss uh, cruise pictures that I got laminated, and I had the band sign. Uh, but I'm not, I don't have anything uh, too crazy like um, I don't have like a guitar or anything. I think the most expensive thing I have is uh, a stage played uh, drum skin that Eric played in uh, Ottawa in 2013. Okay. Okay. So I think that's the most expensive thing I have. Cool. So which item would you say is the most memorable for you? Oh, the Eric thing for sure. Like I, I'd love to show it, but it's like, it's huge. So, you know, just hauling it is huge. But I think the, the other memorable thing, like I said, is uh, this one right here, Carnival of Souls, the, uh, the LP right here, all signed by everyone here. And uh, for, for those who are watching on video, yes, I do have it autographed by Tommy Thayer because I am that guy. Uh, and people are going to ask me why. And uh, if you do not know your history, shame on you. Uh, <laughs> because for, but for those who do not know and are, the, are still learning about Kiss, uh, the band, uh, Tommy Thayer was not officially in the band. He was in between uh, the Black and Blue gigs and uh, Kiss gigs. So he was working for the band, but not as a member. He co-wrote a few of the songs on Carnival of Souls. So that's one of the reasons why I got it signed. Heck, even if I saw uh, Jamie St. James of uh, Black and Blue, I'd get it signed because he mm -hmm. has songwriting credit, credit on that too. Nice. Hey, Kev, uh, let, let's talk about um, uh, Kiss Cruise. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, how, many, uh, how many have you been to? Uh, hang on here. Five. 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 Yeah. Okay. And which one? Do you do you think it's the most memorable? Uh, and oh why? man, uh, three. That's a that was a write off. I think Pasquale, well, you remember that one. I think I've told you that story. I think until I was blue in the face, the one where they lost my luggage. Yes. Oh yeah. That, that was, was my first number kiss three cruise too. Okay. That was my first kiss cruise too. But yeah, they lost my luggage. So, uh, oh hum. And uh, I said, well, if that's how we're gonna start, we're starting off on the right foot, people. <laughs> so I did. Kiss Cruise 3, 4, 5, okay. 7, 8. Okay. Okay. And what's your favorite Kiss Cruise activity? Oh. Can you pick one? Man. Ah, oh, Kiss Cruise activity. Man. You know, it, it's, it's, it's to see activities when you try not to get uh, run over by everyone. Uh, it's the, the, uh, the ones where they, with the individual band members. You know, um, yeah, of Gene course. Had the, uh, Gene had the Gene had the the pick throwing contest. I think yeah. one year uh, Paul had a, um, a kitchen, like he was making pizza. Were you on that cruise? I, that was four, I believe. Yes, four or five. I don't remember. Yeah, 
I went to four and five, so it's one. Yeah, of that's what I'm saying. Four or five. I don't remember which one, but I I remember uh, Paul doing a. He was making pizza. Uh, there was one year. I think it was on Chiss Crew seven or eight. He did. Uh, he did uh, painting where um, he had people on stage and they were literally doing a version of his 1978 solo album. Like it was already drawn, but it was just like you, it's like painting with color, it paints by numbers, sorry. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was like, you put your own twist to it. Um, uh, and then you get to see, for me personally, I'm a, I'm a drummer, so I got to see the Eric Singer drum off. So that was oh, cool. cool seeing other, other members of the KISS family, you know, the KISS army, getting on stage and jamming and then getting judged by um, the other members of the, uh, the kiss fan, like, sorry, not the kiss family, but the other members that are on the kiss crews, like other artists, uh, like for example, they get all the drummers. So you'd have like Brent Fitz, uh, Eric, yeah. and uh, I think Matt Starr was one of the, uh, one of the, um, the judges one year as well for uh, who's playing with ACE currently. So, yeah, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. You, and what's really cool about the Kiss Cruise is you get to see artists literally like you, you're you walking like on the ship and you got, let's say, for example, you got uh, uh, Brent Fitz from uh, from Bruce's band literally just walking right by you and you turn around and say, hey, how are we going? And you're, and you're shooting the breeze with the guy like you've known yeah, the guy so for cool. years. It's so cool. You know, it's really cool. You, you get to sit there and, and then in the back of your mind, you're pinching your talk to Brent Fitz, one of the guys <laughs> that, that played in with that was just on stage with Bruce Kulick and who who's played with Slash, who's played with uh, Theory of a Dead Man, you know, other bands that you you know Canadian wise and you're like, oh crap, that's him. So now that you're talking music, so which yeah. uh, which of the bands did you did you enjoy the most? Oh man, more? I got I got to discover a lot of bands because of Kiss Cruise. You know, I got to discover Night Ranger. Uh, mm. I got to discover I got to discover Fozzie, you know, I knew who they were, but I, I got to discover Fozzie with Chris Jericho's band. Uh, I got to see some tribute bands. I got to see Chris, uh, the all-female yeah. uh, Chris tribute band. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, you know, I knew who they were because Gene Simmons Family Jewels, but now I got to see who they, like, I got to see them live. Uh, who else? Who else had a big name there? I got to see, well, Bruce's band, obviously. Uh, I got to see the first year where, uh, on Kiss Crew 7, where it was Bruce and Bob Kulik yeah, on. Yeah. I got yeah, to see, yeah. uh, you know, I got to see, I, I know this is this is not uh, like, a, uh, it's not a serious band, but I got to see Steel Panther. You know, they're very good in their own right. You know, they're yeah, yeah, incredible yeah. musicians. You know, Satchel played with Rob Halford when he was out of Judas Priest um, back in the 90s in Fight. Uh, so he's uh, he's got, you know, he's, he's, no, he's no schmuck. I got to see Extreme, uh, you know, with Gary Sharon, Nuno Gary Benford. Sharon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, it was actually a really cool thing. Uh, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. It's <laughs> crazy. Um, one, one little side note here. I actually got to see uh, Nuno Betancourt, the lead guitarist of Extreme, play uh, Hot for Teacher by Van Halen with, um, with uh, Steel Panther. I got that on video. Because wow. uh, I said, I don't think I'll ever see a, guitar a lead guitarist um, ever do that again. And uh, yeah, I got uh, I got some pretty good traction on that video. Though. Good stuff. Good stuff. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. yeah. It's like I said, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. It's incredible. <laughs> you know, it's an experience that, you know, you don't you don't really think about until you're talking about it. And you're it's setting in. And you're like, holy crap, I actually had a pretty decent life. Come to think of it. <laughs> But uh, Kevin, what's really cool is that, you know, in a sense, all of these um, experiences that you've had led you to meet Eric Singer. Yeah. So yeah, tell us yeah. about how you guys met. Uh, mutual friends. Really, it was mutual friends of his and uh, and that became mine. Um, so I, I run a page called Fans of Eric Singer. Some of his um, some of his good friends were on the page got the talking i knew who they were uh so i met them at the end of kiss cruise 3 i saw them hanging out on uh, the pool deck i said i introduced myself and they said to me I, they said listen it's the last day you got our word you will try to get you to meet eric next year so i said okay 
Okay. And I held them to it and they did. I got, they pulled me aside one day and it was uh, on the side stage and it was a quick uh, little meet and greet. And uh, he got to know, he knew who I was because they mentioned uh, me to him. So he, he asked me, you know, you know, you know, who, where I was from uh, and yeah, starstruck. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, did I, was I able to say a word? Probably not. I don't remember. <laughs> it's all a blur at this point. And you also mentioned um, the New Jersey Kiss Expo. I think you failed yep. to mention that was the same expo that Eric Singer was at. Yeah, well, I mentioned that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. And but you worked with Eric at that expo. Um, the lineups, not, right? Well, not directly. Not directly. I think it was more like controlling the lineup because I, right. I knew the lineup was going to be stupid. And the fr uh, and one of Eric's friends was the organizer of the Kiss Expo. Uh, 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 expo. Sorry, my. My tongue decided to go wild there. Um, but yeah, he said, listen, I know you do you do security work. So if you're able to, you know, try oh. to keep people, you know, in line, at least try to not have it where it's like 10 people wide and nobody can walk through to go see uh, Lydia Chris or Bruce Kulik. You know, they want to try to keep it single file or at least two by two or something like that. And uh I'll always, I'll always remember. Actually, it was a funny story. I know it's kind of, uh, it's kind of sort of inappropriate, but uh, so Eric was looking at me. He's like, Kevin, what are you doing here? I said, Well, I'm at the expo. I'm helping control the line. He's like, Well, I'm going to the washroom. Do you want to help? Do you want to help me control the line there too? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good, <laughs> I'm yeah good. Eric uh, rises you a lot, eh? You know, <laughs> well, you know, that's when you know he likes you when he yeah. rises you. And uh, every time that uh, he see, it's it's really cool when you're when uh, you, you go into the meet and greet and say Kevin Ganley and I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, you're pinching yourself. You're still pinching. You still pinching yourself. Going, oh, that's right. He knows me. This is something. <laughs> it's a, it, it, and it still boggles my mind today. You know, I'm just sitting there going, oh my god, he still knows me. That's fine. You know? That's that's cool. So for hey, the uh, people, sorry, for the people who don't know him or never met him, uh, what's he like? He's, you know, he's a very, he's very nice. Uh, he's one of those uh, that I think, again, I don't, I can't really, I don't know him too personally to be able to tell, but I think he's one of those who, if he's able to dial how the person is, he's going to be able to, um, you know, have a conversation based on your personality. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, he's really nice, like very, very nice. Uh, He's one of those. He's going to talk to you. He's going to. He's going to. You know. He's going to take a minute to sign whatever you have. Um, you know, shake your hand, take pictures, and and the, the whole nine yards. He's really, really good with kids. By the way, mm -hmm. um, he's probably one of the, the the ones that. That's what really stands out to me was because I, 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 I find that a lot of the celebrities are. Yes, they're good with kids, but he just stands out a lot. Like I've seen on the Kiss Cruise that he's literally no word of a no word of a lie. He's on the it's the last indoor show. He's literally taking apart his drum kit and he's he's autographing it and he's giving it to kids. He's taking Ooh. his thimbles. He's he's giving sticks and, yeah. and he's just making sure that the kids are having it. You know, he goes out of his way to make sure. Okay, you kid, you have it, and he get. You know, he kind of gets disappointed on the Kiss Cruise. I've seen it where, you know, it's a, it's an adult that, you know, that interferes and, yeah. like, you know, how they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. And they're like, ah, yeah, I just got this. And you're like, no, man, that was for that kid. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's really good with kids. And that's uh, that's that's what really stood out to me in, in, a, in a way is, you know, I, I've seen celebrities really good with kids. But I, I guess it's just the way he's with kids that it really stands out to me and I really like it. Hey, uh, Kev, uh, as a result of your connection with Eric, so um, you've told us already that you've had some pretty amazing, you know, once in your life experiences. <laughs> so uh, can you tell us about some of them? Um, yes and no, because I don't want to, like, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that I, like I said, I don't want to be flaunting. So it's it's the I think it's just that Portland show that really sticks out to me. It was one of okay. the once in a lifetime experience. I don't think I can ever really repeat it. Um, 
but it's just for me personally, it's just, Hey man, it's the fact that I have a kiss member that knows who, that I exist. Mm-hmm. Hey man, I could die happy tomorrow. <laughs> true. True. What else? What else you need? Eh? That's right. Exactly. Right. So I think it's fantastic that uh, Eric knows you because of yeah. your fan page, right? Yeah. Fans yeah. of Eric Singer. It's, it's funny how, you know, that little page that I just started for the hell of it gained that much traction to the point where I, that Eric knows the page. But that was pretty early in your history. That was around the time I started the Kiss Army Nation page. Wasn't oh, it? yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it started with, uh, it, same with you, right? You had another name and, uh, it, and we changed it and whatnot. So that was the thing. I think I started with a name called Eric Singer Drummer. And it sounded very bland. Mm -hmm. So I said, I need something to stick out. And I sourced out, and that's where the name fans of Eric Singer stood out. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds actually pretty, you know, pretty. it sounds pretty good. And I'm going to use that. And, yeah, from there, it just just went from there. I I never expected it to, to take off. So what's the page like? Tell us a little bit about the content of the page. So I celebrate Eric's uh, entire career. So I don't really minimize it to only kiss. You know, the guy's played with, <laughs> I think he's played with every band known to man. Yeah. You know, for, uh, you know, for those who don't know, or, you know, throw it in your Google machine, Google's your best friend. But I can, I can mention a few names, you know, he played with Black Sabbath. He's played with Lita Ford. He's played uh, with Brian May. He's played with Alice Cooper, he's played with Kiss. You know, the list goes on and on and on. You know, he's a very well-respected session musician as well. There's a lot of tribute albums that you get, that a lot of people may not know that were um, that were produced by uh, Bob Kulik in the early 2000s. A lot of them, he was on. Yeah. So, and you know, you, you remember before Bob uh, passed away, he was promoting uh, the, the SpongeBob song, Sweet Victory. You remember that? Well, he... Eric actually played drums on that song. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know either until I went and researched it. So, Kevin, as you know, there's a lot of KISS fan pages on Facebook. Are there and, really? Oh. Crap, I, I really got to start paying attention. <laughs> yeah, man. I know. Huh? I know. And you know what you think? Oh, there's so many pages out there. It's so easy to run. Really? Is it? Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about what it takes to maintain it's, the uh, Eric Singer page. It's very time consuming. Um, a lot of it is just like, if I need to keep my audience engaged, I got to post or else they're disengaged. I lose them. You know, it's, it's basic social media one-on-one, you know, as much as I don't even have social media training, it's just, you know, you, I've done a little bit of research. I looked online and said, okay, how do I keep my damn audience engaged? I just post like little things like, um, like now that kiss went back on tour i can go on youtube and uh, post some clips of like let's say his drum solo or i went and promoted um some some 2001 uh footage when kiss released their uh soundboard tokyo album uh, back mm-hmm. in june uh stuff like that you know if i find pictures i'll post it uh you know from the shows a lot of people send them to me uh it's just yeah gotta keep the audience engaged man if i don't engage we lose them so when I know I don't have time, thank God for that is I can schedule posts. So mm-hmm. I work overnights. I can be sleeping and the, po- and the, and the Facebook page runs itself. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. You gotta re you gotta be really active, right? So if you want to, yeah. if you want to be active. there, you know, all life. You know, Very time consuming. Yeah. Very time consuming. So, and then Kev, be, besides your uh, fans of Eric Singer page, you're also admin of the Kiss Army Nation page. Yes. Okay. So tell us about your experience uh, with that uh, particular group. Well, I hate the guy who created it. He's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean Brad? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, I love it. That, that guy, I, I can't stand the freaking guy. No, I'm <laughs> um, no, no, I'm only kidding. Uh, so. Oh, man. Again, very time consuming. A lot of it is to manage the spam. The abundance amount of spam requests that we get is stupid. Really? Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Like, we get so many, like, Pasquale, you're a co-admin, so you know, the amount of bot accounts that we get per day is, oh, it's oh, yeah. insane. I think there was a time where, like, you and I were disengaged off the uh, offline for about maybe six, seven, eight hours. Come back to about 40 requests. Yeah. And, like, one of them is maybe a legit member like a legit person that actually knows kiss the other 39 are just bots. Well, yeah. Yeah. When the answer to the questions, okay. Okay. Want to join, love to join. Yeah. That, uh, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. No, I, I think that page, we have more blocked members than some kiss pages have full, full on members. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think, what well, have we hit the 10,000 mark yet or. Uh... Oh yeah. We're at 11,005. Okay. So I think out of eleven five, I think we have maybe fifty thousand blocked. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know another thing about that page. It's just like this podcast. We want to keep it positive, you know. Absolutely. Um, so you know, we tell people on this page, keep it positive. No personal attacks. Uh, not yeah. on the not on the members. Not on the not on the band. You know. And I'm sorry, any kind of personal attacks, you, you're gone. Oh yeah, you're out. You're yeah. out. Exactly. So managing Same that is not easy. Same goes for my uh, Eric page too. Yeah. You know? But um, the thing is, you know, in uh, in pages like ours, you know, there there might there, we I know on Kiss Army Nation, there's there's friends of the band um, in the group, and I don't want yeah. them to see that negativity. There exactly. are people who take that stuff personally and exactly. want to have that safe place to go to Absolutely. and discuss Kiss without uh -huh. the danger of being attacked. And you know, I think we work really hard to make sure Absolutely. that doesn't happen it, in our it, page. It's all it's it's almost a full time job to think of it, right? It is. Oh, you know? mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, because you know we all work full time jobs, so it's really hard to to really keep keep track. Um, but it's um, it's just sad that you know we have some people that want to go down that avenue, and we're like, okay, man, like no, no, no. Like, don't open that can of worms. You know? Yeah, but, you know, I choose to focus on the people who are positive and contribute yep, positively. Absolutely. To the, you and, know. you know, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, they point out, okay, not, not COVID withstanding. I'm saying, like, there's a lot of stuff that they're pointing out of the bands. Like, okay, we know. You don't need to point it out. Yeah. You know, like, for example, I know, I know it's a bad example, but Paul's voice, for example. We know it's been not the best shape in the last couple of years. Stop ragging on it. We know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, or, but, you know, to, to each their own. In terms, absolutely. Yeah, this is what they, and, it, and it's, we want to celebrate every era of the band. You know, we don't want to leave any uh, era out. Like, of course, like, if one person likes the Vinnie Vincent era of Kiss, I might not like it, but I'll contribute to it. I'm, I'll be like, hey, man, I've got my opinions on Vinnie Vincent, mm -hmm. you know, but this is what my comment, my comment says, you know? I have my reserved uh, opinions. I won't disclose them uh, because I don't want to start a fight. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the last thing you want to do. And again, like you've mentioned, we want to try to keep a positive experience for everyone. Exactly. Exactly. So, Kevin, um, in closing, yep. um, you know, a common theme in all of our fan profile episodes is that, you know, being a KISS fan is really a special thing. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, to summarize uh, this episode, uh, tell our listeners why being a KISS fan is special for you. Oh, I'm supposed to be a KISS fan? God, I hate <laughs> it. You know, I've, I think I've spent so much money on, uh, I think you and I collectively have spent so much money. We put uh, Gene's kids through college about four ah, times. It's all worth it. It's all worth it. <laughs> you know, think about it. The amount of money that collectively the, the fans have spent on this band alone, we put their kids and their grandkids and their and their great grandkids through college four times over, you know, but in closing, yeah, uh, it's a, it's an experience. It's a one in a life, once in a lifetime experience. I don't think any other band can top. Um, you know, I, again, I've, I've done some meet and greets with some other uh, bands and they don't hold uh, true to what kiss has done. You know, it's as much as the uh, people want to rag on them charging uh, overpriced, um, uh, you know, the dollar sign for what you get. Uh, you, you know, I, again, I'm speaking uh, for myself. You get to see where the band actually comes up to you, signs whatever you want. Okay, it's two items, but still better than none. 
And, you know, you get to see them for 30 seconds. You feel alone in that room for 30 seconds with that person, you know, it's that conversation. And you're like, holy crap, you know, how many people can actually say I've talked to X, Y, Z um, in, uh, of the band? You know what I mean? There's not a lot of people uh, that do what Kiss has done. It's, you know, I'll use an example, Motley Crue. You don't meet the entire band. You, you meet probably everyone but Tommy Lee or Vince Neil. Yeah. So, you know, this, you meet the entire band. You get your bang for your buck. You know, that's about the best I can say. You know, I'm going to rag. I, I think I'm just going to ramble on. So <laughs> I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Hey, Kev, you know, um, just, um, you know, uh, wrapping up, I, you know, as, as closing remarks, uh, I, I've heard so many great things about you, man. And I'm so happy that, that, that we had the chance to get you as a guest, you know, in our show. Really? This is a. Uh, this is a real confirmation man, of, of your passion, you know, and, and the way you do things, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy, you know, same as, as Pask, for sure that uh, you're doing what you're doing with, uh, with uh, Eric Singer's, you know, page and with the Kiss Army Nation. So it's been, uh, personally, it's been a real pleasure, man, to, to, to be here with you. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see you, man. Uh, hopefully we're going to be, uh, we're going to be together in the, some of the next uh, KISS shows, man. So Hopefully, uh, hopefully soon. And uh, you know what? Uh, checks in the mail so you guys can stop pretending to like me. <laughs> 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 I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. You know, I, Kevin, I, 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 I met you. I met you in person. So I got, you know, a firsthand experience. Um, of your energy and like Claudia was saying of your passion it really it's really evident when somebody is talking to you especially about KISS but you have so many other passions besides KISS and whatever yes. you talk about you just your 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 way of expressing it just shows your love for that subject matter um, and you know you know just doing this podcast I hope I hope that the listeners sort of sense and feel your passion and excitement through this podcast, because to me, at least, it's very evident. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's contagious, man. It, yeah. it's, it's great. It's great to, to, to be here. Yeah. I've, been, I've been told that I'm very passionate about what I do, even at work. You know, it's to the point where it even gets annoying, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate it, uh, Claudio. I, uh, I really hope that we do officially meet at some point, you know. We uh, will. We will, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I... I you know, we're closer than we think, you know, I'm yeah. not that, I'm not really that far. I'm just across the border. Mm -hmm. As weird as, the, as weird as people around the world think, you know, across the border, I mean, and I'm a, I'm a province over. I'm not, I'm not a country over. You're an hour away. <clears throat> yeah. I'm literally just an hour away. You're a hop, skip and a jump as you used to tell me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so Kevin, on behalf of Claudio and myself, man, uh, thanks again for being on the show. Hey, no problem. Anytime. So to the KISS Army, thank you very much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show and felt the energy uh, from Kevin. And remember, never stop rocking. Take care, everyone. Bye. Take care. Thanks, Kev. Thank you. The KISS Army Nation podcast has partnered up with Click T-Shop to offer our listeners a high-quality T-shirt with graphic design by Xander Graphics. Check out Click T-Shop at clicktshop.com.